quite unfortunately, our cat pants has to go to the vet today. So we had to stop to get the cat carrier. Poor kitty has something wrong with his eyeball. He's actually had this problem before. We took him to the vet, got it fixed, but the problem has come back. So that's gonna be a big part of our day. So we're gonna get some thrifting and some other stuff done around getting the cat to the vet. But there's also some things here in my storage unit that I need to get to work on my van. But if you watched yesterday's episode, you know we did a little work here in the van, installing a roof and stuff and uh, insulation. So there's my fan cover. There's just a lot of little stuff in our storage unit that's parts that go in the van. So I'm gonna pick those up while we're here too. And after we get some thrifting done today, we'll do just a little bit more work on the van. Just keep getting her ready for some road tripping. Hello, I am Tinsel. What are you laughing at? Are you laughing at me? Are you laughing at me? I'm sorry. Come closer. Come closer. Okay, listen. Too close. Too close. Listen, I introduce you to Fred. This Steve. Say hello to Steve. Steve no talk. Steve just pushed blocks. Right, Steve? Okay, Steve, listen. I eat you! That vet appointment is still about an hour, hour and a half away. And so instead of just going and getting a little thrifting in first, I'm just gonna kind of wait around and get some van work done. And then we'll go to the vet appointment and then we'll do some thrifting after that. Uh, it kind of sucks when you have appointments right in the middle of the day because it kind of puts a hamper in anything else that you want to do. But, it's not a huge deal. We gotta get we gotta get old pants better. Uh, basically, we're replacing all the paneling that the person that owned this van before I did. Uh, they didn't do a very good job. It's kind of a mess all over the place. Uh, you know, just very loosely thrown up. I'm going to take all that out and replace it with this white stuff, which we did this on yesterday's episode. And uh, there's a lot left in here, so I gotta get all this extra stuff out before I can even take this stuff off the wall. So I'm gonna do a little bit of that today. Not gonna be able to get a lot done, but uh, a little bit every day. I'm just gonna get a little done every day, and then here in a couple weeks, maybe she'll be ready. I don't even know where the screws are, to be honest. There's a long screw. Should do it. All right, it's pretty nice having it nice and open in there. Definitely more conducive to thrifting this way, but uh, it's gonna look like a tiny little house when I'm done with it. Oh man. I'm trying to get this done before the sweltering heat comes. It's about 90 degrees now, but here in about an hour and a half, it'll be about a 115. All right, check this out. I got the paneling off the wall. And like I said, the person who had it before me put that up. And uh, I want you to check this out. This is how he chose to insulate it. Talk about super cheap. He put some cork in those spaces, a little bit of reflectix up there. And these are down blankets. These are like camping sleeping bags. He shoved in all these holes. Honestly, those sleeping bags probably did a little bit more than the cork and the reflectix did, but otherwise this insulation job wasn't doing much. And now I can't get all that out. <laughs> Pretty interesting though. I'm, I can say I've never seen that, shoving down blankets into the caverns, into the spaces to insulate it. I guess it's better than nothing. I don't know, but I'm gonna undo all that work that someone else did and I'm gonna put in some proper insulation and eventually finish it out like this bad boy. Eventually. All right, we're ready to leave the house. Pants is big, man. I'm sorry, Pants. But we got to take you to the vet and the carrier. Dims the rules. Dims the rules, Pants. It's fine, biggin. He's not happy. Uh, we got a big cart of stuff to take to our toy booths, too. If they want to keep them at the vet for a while, we'll probably just drop them off. Go to our toy booths. Go to our... I keep calling them toy booths. We got a toy and a dish booth. We'll go get those restocked while Pants is at the vet. Or if it's just an in and out kind of thing, 
We'll just do it afterwards. I know, buddy. I know it's torture, but you're fine. Look, I got put treats in there. Here. You're gonna sit right here between us, all right? Here. We'll, we'll do cat cam, okay? Cat cam. It's okay, say hello, say hello to the camera. He's so big, man. He still just meows boxing. It's fine, big mighty pantar. It's fine. So, turns out the vet is curbside only. Kind of gonna be hard to see those signs, but I guess we gotta call him to come out and get the kitty. It's okay, pantar. That's his lion name, pantar. <laughs> he's pants in cat form, but he's pantar, but he's a lion. Be a lion, pantar. Uh, we're just coming to have y'all look at his eye again. Oh, and there goes Pantar. He's oh, no. he's not happy. <laughs> well, while he's in the vet, we're going to go to our flea market and drop off some toys and then we'll come right back. Actually, we've only been to this vet once. I did not realize how close it was to our flea market. Oh, cool. It's just down the road. So this works out nicely. That was actually really good timing. As soon as we pulled over into our antique place, they called us back and let us know what was going on with pants. We didn't really explain it very well at the beginning, but he's got a problem that pops up on his eye. We had eye drops and when it would pop up, we'd put some on in a couple days, it'd be gone. Uh, and it was kind of gone for a long time and now it's back. And I kid you not, what the vet just explained is like, he basically has herpes, but in the same way that humans get herpes and it just presents as cold sores. So it's just a reoccurring thing he'll always have. We we'll just have to keep medicating him, but that's uh, that's all right because the eye drops make it go away and keep him pretty healthy. So let's get this stuff dropped back off here, and then uh, and then we'll go rescue Pants. He's probably ready to be rescued. All right, we're over at my toy booth. Not going to be able to do a lot of filming because my neighbors across the way are running an air compressor, which is no big deal. Just no need for me to talk a lot. All right, it's good to be back at the to the dish booth to see what's missing. Um, this is weird. Don't know what that is because that's not even mine. Um, we actually haven't been getting sales reports for the last couple of days. There's, there's been a glitch in the system. So I have no idea what actually sold. So it's going to be interesting to see what's missing. Unfortunately, I don't remember everything that was in here, but there's a big gaping hole right there. That's cool. That looks a little thin. Um, this is pretty thin. I've got a couple of them stacked on top of each other usually, as you can tell. So definitely been something sold. That's exciting. Um, but I've got a bunch of things to come into the booth today. Got some stuff we thrifted over the last couple of days. Some of those Corning Visions pots, which I'm very excited to get in here because those have been selling really well here. So get those rolling and we'll head over to the toy booth and check that out. See how that's going and head back over to get pants. I miss him. I'm so, oh wow. Pretty much all these are gone. I had like 10 of them here. And now we only have three. Good thing I brought one today. Got a few more Disney cups to put in there too. So looking forward to seeing how those do. There's one right here. These little like vintage Mickey looking things. They're not vintage cups, but it's vintage Mickey Mouse, you know. Anyway, let's see what else we got going on. It's Charlie Brown cups. They're gonna be pretty cool. I've got a few Coca-Cola things to put on the Coca-Cola shelf. I want to keep this shelf a collectibles shelf, but um, I might need to remove some things around because I don't have a Charlie Brown shelf, but we'll make it work. We'll figure it out. Let's get this bad boy restocked. That's all of the restocking. A couple things to note, just in case any of you are interested. Strangely with my Legos, these cups that I made myself to resell for kids to fill their own Legos with, I sold a few right when we put it in here and that was it. But, <laughs> but I've sold a bunch of the big ones. Moms or what, I don't know if it's, this is gonna be difficult. 
I don't know if moms are just buying their kids higher quantity Legos or if collector people are coming here getting my good stuff, but I'm selling a lot of my larger containers, just not the small ones. It's interesting. This is also the only place we do that, that we sell those Legos. Uh, so it's kind of hard to compare to how our other booths would do. And I just realized I still had Boba Fett here, so we should, you know, I think I'm just gonna stick him in there too. How about that? Uh, but yeah, so just learning curve, figuring that out as we go. I do need to get more of those bigger containers in there and uh, sell a few more of those. But also someone has been stashing some of these that are not mine. I think these belong to my neighbor, so we'll go deliver those yeah. back to where they go. But that's it, booth's doing well. All right, I went ahead and put all that stuff that we just brought in in here. She's looking very full, excited about it. Filled up that space with some of those recycled candles I've been working on. They're really cute, I like them. Um, it smells really good in this corner, but I've kind of noticed a few things that have sold and I'm really excited about it. I had um, a stack of enamelware bowls that looked just like this, but they had, they were like this size, maybe a little bigger. They had popcorn written on the front and there was two little popcorn bowls for like a, a two person sharing bucket thing, which is really exciting. It sold. Um, I sold an Afghan, the one I bought the other day at Goodwill. Um, it was really bright and colorful and rainbow. I've got this one here too. Just replace in the basket with that. Fill that out a little bit. Um, and then I also remembered something else that now I forgot. We'll remember in a minute, but anyway. A couple things in here that aren't mine. This isn't, but that's cool. Go take that up to the front. Put those Corning Visions pots in here, so maybe they're a little bit more of a focal point since that shelf's pretty full and it's tucked away in the corner. Doesn't really, people definitely look at it because things do sell out of that corner. But, um, sold a ton of these Harley shirts too which Dallas was like, put the Harley shirts in your, your booth. I think they'll sell really well. And I was like, but I got dresses, like dresses and Harley shirts. That seems weird. But he's like, no, I'll just do it. It'll be good. And he was right. He usually is, <laughs> but um, it's looking really good. I'm excited. I'm happy to see it again. I think it looks a little better. <laughs> Definitely put a lot of work into it and she's come a long way. So very proud of her she's doing good we're gonna grab a couple sodas before we go rescue pants pants would be so mad if we were getting if you knew we were getting sodas instead of coming to get him but i'm gonna get like a squirt and a grape soda what are you gonna get um i'm gonna get this what are you getting the rock and rye rock and what rock and rye rock and rye oh look at him are you healthy cat the doc said he's fine other than the reoccurring eye issue, but uh, we're going to get him some medication that we have a prescription for and he's going to be good. Look at his eyeball. See how it's cloudy? Just a reoccurring thing, but seriously, a couple days of those eye drops will be all good. He's so mad right now though, so let's get him home and then let's go to the thrift store, all right? All right, now that I am properly and entirely covered in cat hair, Same. her too. Let's get on to the thrifting portion of the day. Good old pants is safe at home now, probably hiding under the bed. Yes, exactly. <laughs> not happy he had to leave, probably not understanding. Don't get me wrong, he's a smart cat, but I think he just went home going, why? Aw, man, that's pretty cool. Too bad it doesn't have his like, cutter thingy on it. That'd have been pretty sweet to have at home. I've always wanted to make real french fries, but I don't really want to cut all those potatoes into little tiny, tiny strips, so haven't done it yet. But anywho, this cool little colander. Oh, dang it. That's a beautiful handle. Too bad there's only one of them. I've sold a couple of colanders in the last couple of days in my booth, so kind of looking to get some more of them to put in there. They seem to be working out okay, but two broken things in a row. These are kind of cute, but they're a little pricey. I don't really want to pay five dollars a piece for them. I do like them though. Hmm, not much. Not much at all. Ooh, what's that? It's a game I already. It's a game I already have, but two bucks will get it and put it in the toy booth. There's plenty of games tucked all around in here, but. 
Nothing I really need. Hmm. It's a lot of nonsense. And there's more. You see that NTSC logo? Rages. Look at these yellow chairs. That's what I'm talking about. Good taste. Whoever did that, good taste. So I don't really give a lot of tips on the channel. I try to just kind of lead by example. And if you see me sell this, maybe you can learn something, maybe not. But uh, one thing I did want to point out are specific Beyblade arenas like this one. It's hard plastic, it folds out. Now this one, I'm gonna, it's not that great right now. I'll tell you why in a second. But I brought home one of these that's in great condition uh, not too long ago. And it actually resells for quite a bit, an impressive amount. Um, it's very special and pretty rare. Unfortunately, this one I'm not gonna get because it's colored on. It's missing a piece here that latches the whole thing. And like, that's like permanent marker that's been rubbed in. Definitely not gonna come off no matter what you do. Uh, if it was all there, maybe I'd still consider it and just keep it around the house for one to use for some of the Beyblade shenanigans we get up to. But uh, at any rate, a little tip for Beyblade stuff. Keep an eye out for anything that's Beyblade that's this nice and this well put together because that stuff sells. Here we go. Good rule number two. Check it out. I can't remember the last time we were here. Been a couple weeks, I think. And I think the last time we were here, prices were a bit high. We'll see how it goes today, though. It's been long enough to restock a couple times. Hmm. That's kind of tempting because every single Disney cup I've put in my booth, I sold. So I guess I'll get this for a dollar, sell it for five. Sure. That'll work. Check this. One and then two not three but three that one's a springy boy look at that it's a bummer these shelves are packed and they're doing some restocking right now but there's not a ton that i really want to get hmm some intriguing stuff like this Little Campbell's soup cup bowls, 2006. I mean, they're fine. I just put some Campbell's soup stuff in my my booth, so I'm very curious how that goes there. And if it's super popular, I'm gonna start getting a lot of Campbell's stuff. But we're gonna see how those go first, because those are pretty nice. So hopefully, someone's really gonna like those. Let's see, ton of plates. Those are pretty. Why is that so textured? Weird. Hmm. Not much shaking. There's quite a bit here to look at. 849 is not bad for that. Might have to hold on to that. What else? Four forty-nine. 449, I might actually get this one. Maybe, maybe not. Ooh, baby, definitely getting that. 249, 249 a piece. Find of the day, baby, let's go. Let's go. Well, that's not something you see every day. Boo. Check that out. Well, that's pretty. Ooh, it's a little broken. Door's not gonna completely fall off, but it wanted to. It's really pretty. Bet, bet. bet a little jostle. There we go. She nice. And there's the cable. This is the shelf that just keeps giving. What? What? Probably not gonna buy that. Kind of want to, but what is the point of it? For a long time, this whole rack right here was pretty much video games, but they've shrunk all down to the bottom. So I'm gonna give them a quick look through real quick. I'm seeing a lot of stuff I already have, so 
It's not a biggie, but just gotta make sure there's nothing special here. Here we go, last stop of the day. This is a pretty good Goodwill. We've been going to it a lot lately because it's been doing us all right. What was it a couple weeks ago I found here? Uh, Luigi's Mansion? Yes. The, the sequel one, I think, that's on 3DS. Probably one of my best finds on this side of town ever. So maybe today we could redo. Whoa, this plate is trippy. It looks like it's broken, but it's not. It's just got a little piece up, it's up at the top. I like that a lot. I wish there were more of them. I'd get them all, but I don't want just one small dessert plate. I got plenty of plates at home. What do we got? Almost nothing. Oh, Minnie. Too bad Nikki's not here too. That'd be a great salt and pepper shaker set for my booth. I have never seen this plushy Steve before. A dollar forty nine. Let's go. Let's go. Look at this. That's pretty tempting too. For two forty nine. Yeah, we'll get that. Holy moly! Gigantor. Now there's a Yoshi egg. Oh my gosh. There's a Yoshi egg. It's so big. Well, I didn't realize that this giant BB-8 was only a dollar. Did you see this? Oh. <laughs> yeah, this does lift up. Trap door. That's worth a dollar, ain't it? Heck yeah. The, the Emperor's throne room. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we close these first. You know the thing I was saying earlier about Beyblade arenas. Here's one that's in the middle. You know, I bet most of you that know anything about Beyblades are going to know what I'm talking about with the cheap, the super cheap Beyblade arenas. There's some that are just a piece of plastic, and nothing else. The one that I showed you earlier was like the high end. This one's in the middle. It's got two pieces. It has a lid. The plastic's a little bit higher grade than the other ones. This one's just okay. This is, you don't want to buy this to resell. Um, this one is missing. I would buy it to resell because I have my toy booth, you know. Two bucks, I'd probably make eight, nine dollars off of it or something. Or maybe put a Beyblade in there and get ten out of it. Um, but that one's missing one of the pieces, one of these plastic connectors that holds it together. Uh, so I just wanted to show that as an example. It'd be nice if we'd seen a cheaper, one of the super cheap ones today, just kind of show the whole range. That's middle ground right there. If you want to buy one for your kids, buy one of these. Don't buy one of the just simple pieces of plastic. Buy one of the two part, slightly thicker ones. Or like that one I saw earlier. If you see that, buy that. Just covered my whole face. I put a couple things back I was gonna buy that giant uh, Bugs. What's the baby Bugs' name? Buster? Buster. I was gonna buy the giant Buster, but it was like from Six Flags. It wasn't really that special. It was kind of foamy and not really high quality. I only bought the BB-8 because it was a dollar, and that kind of thing will definitely sell in my toy booth, though I don't usually go after it because it's too much, too bulky to mess with. Uh, but that giant Steve's probably gonna be, I was gonna say a real money maker. I mean, 10, 12 bucks, but it only costs a dollar, so that's good. That was a pretty good haul though, pretty good day. I'm pretty excited about this giant egg. I'll probably turn it into a Yoshi egg or some sort of lamp, I don't know, but it's just a nice raw campus, don't you think? Most of the other eggs I've bought this so far to make like a Yoshi lamp that I've been picturing my head out of, though this is a lot bigger, but most of the ones I've been thinking about making one out of have been, had like, they open in the middle, they have a crease, but this one's pretty much solid. I mean, the form lines where it's put together are there, but that's fine. I just mean like, like the ones that I've bought so far, like unscrew. So this is a solid piece. I could definitely paint that up with like a Yoshi egg. I think that'd be exciting. Uh, but we're done. Let's go home. Let's talk about all the stuff that we got. And make sure the pants is not still mad at us. Do you know what episode of SpongeBob this is? Ooh. Oh, this is the one where um, SpongeBob and Patrick go to paint Mr. Krabs' house, and he says, "If you get paint on anything, I'll have your butts mounted above my fireplace." <laughs> <laughs> and they get paint on his first dollar he ever made, and they like go to. 
go to like wipe it off and then they get paint on all of it and then they just painted the whole dollar and then you find out that Mr. Krabs knows how to get rid of the paint from saliva and then he laughs so hard that it makes all the paint in the house go out. Yeah. Well, if you didn't know this, Hannah has consumed more SpongeBob than I have watched TV in the entirety of my life. <laughs> I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> Everything we do, she can link it to a SpongeBob reference. Um, I don't remember that one. It's a ridiculous episode. All right, well, let's jump into all this stuff that we got at the thrift store today. There's some stuff I'm pretty excited to talk about. There's some real randomness here. Um, but before we jump into that, let's talk about our toy booths real quick that we stopped at. I think it's just a, a, an important thing to just explain it a little bit real quick. I mean, I've ex we've explained everything there is explained about these toy booths at one time or another. But I, I noticed on the last few days worth of uh, videos, there's been a lot more than usual questions about it. It's because for whatever reason, one of our videos kind of went, not viral, but it kind of trended upward. And there's just a lot of new people here. And what's funny is we didn't go to our toy booths for about a week. Yeah. And so there's like a week's worth of new people that are just like, what are you talking about when you say toy booths? So if you got to this point, obviously today in this video, you saw us going to our toy booth, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, there's a lot of people watching new that have just heard us talking about it for a week and kind of don't know what's going on there. And I think this is a perfect episode to talk about it because literally everything we brought home today, I think I'm going to put in our booths. Yeah. So, um, we don't just resell on eBay. That's the important thing to understand. We also resell uh, clothing on modern apps like Poshmark and Depop and stuff. Uh, but right now, I'd say our biggest money maker, and if it's not our biggest, it's really close to tying with our clothes, are these toy booths. Uh, like we need booths is what we've been calling them. There's just really not a great name for them. Antique booths. There's a lot of things to call them. Um, but we have about four of them total, two in that store that we went today, one across town here, and then one back in my hometown. Uh, and they all are uh, inside of a larger antique store. We put a numeric code on every one of our items, and whenever someone buys them from that store, they take them to the cash register, and they pay for them there, and they tally up the money we've made at the cash register. It's a pretty normalized thing in most of middle America. Uh, it's not as popular out here out west as it is back home, though it definitely exists. But where I'm from, where she's from, these kinds of stores are on every corner. I mean, my hometown alone has three or four of them. Yeah. Or it did. It's got two huge ones, and it actually had two more of them right next to the bigger one in, in town. And I think one or two of those closed. But at any rate, the brand, <laughs> the, the chain that we have one in back home in Kentucky has like, 22 stores across Kentucky. It's nuts. Uh, pretty popular thing. Uh, a lot of questions we've been getting are like, how how do you know if people are stealing stuff? How do you take care of it? Who mans the booth? And, and it's there's a lot of trust in it. Things do get stolen, just like any store in the world that sells anything, stuff does get stolen, but it's usually pretty petty. Like someone uh, takes a piece off of one Nerf gun and puts it on another to pay uh, cheaper for one thing. Or like I had some Beyblades early on that before I packaged them better that someone would, someone was cutting them open and just switching out the parts they want. You know, so that stuff happens and you just have to know it does. If you've ever sold anything, retail, whatever, you're gonna have stuff stolen. So you, what we do is we maximize, uh, or we make it as hard as possible steal. So we don't just put labels on, we tape over them. I zip tie my Nerf guns together. I've begun putting things in harder packaging that's not just plastic bags, etc. And you just, you do what you can. And ultimately, if you do it all right, these kinds of reselling booths, antique mall booths, they can be pretty profitable. Um, we're definitely turning a profit on the ones that we have. Uh, we closed down one here in town that was not profitable to open in another. So, you know, there's risk to it. You're gonna lose a little bit of money, but uh, this is definitely something we need to get to, get into a little bit more down the road. I'm trying to collect some more information. There's about five different people, and most of them, not all of them, but most of them are couples, just like us, that have, since watching our videos, been inspired to open their own toy booths, just like we have, or similar to. And I'm hoping um, I can, later on down the road, once they've ran those for a little while, maybe source some information from you guys. So if you're watching, so let's stay in contact about how your booths are going so I can kind of share the overall information 
with the people watching uh, so we can make this a, a bigger, grander learning experience. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Uh, because we can tell you how it's going for us, but that's not going to mean a lot because we're in Phoenix, Arizona, so there's many variables here in Phoenix that you may not have in, say, the Midwest or city to not even regionally, but city to city, you know. We do, we our success right now is honestly just derived from the fact that there's 400 thrift stores in all of Phoenix. You know what I mean? Um, but I just thought I'd give that kind of overarching explanation how things work, what we're doing with the toy booths, because I've just been getting a ton of questions. Uh, it's it's getting to the point where it's pretty tempting to just make a video about it, just say how do these toy booths, how do these antique booths, or how to resell in antique markets. Um, I don't really like making those types of videos. We're not necessarily intending to be here to be to, uh, a tutorial type channel, but if I do make that, I might just make it sometime in the next couple weeks and just like post it as a second video. So, you know, you'll see our daily vlog and then just randomly for no reason at four o'clock, you'll get a notification from this account going, a new video from Tindo, how to sell at antique malls. Uh, but if I get to doing that down the road, maybe it'll be after I get some more information from some other people we've been in contact uh, that are doing their own booth thing. Sound good? Sounds good to me. Well, you got to remind me to do it because I'll forget. <laughs> um, but we'll talk a little bit more about that for the rest of the video and the stuff that we got because there's a whole lot here that we're going to put in those toy booths, in those flea market booths that we sell at. So you start with yours because you got a whole lot today. I got so much stuff. Oh my gosh. I got this Disney cup. It's Snow White. <laughs> and that's all you got? That's it. <laughs> it was not a great day for dishes, but that's okay because there are so many dishes in our other room that need to get stocked in our toy booth. We kind of made yesterday and today about, I keep saying toy booth. We made yesterday and today kind of about the toy booths and just getting all the stuff that's laying around here uh, into the toy booths. And tomorrow or the next day, we'll wake up, price some dishes and put more of them over at Hannah's booth. Uh, I got about half of them in today. So I feel like it was progress. Yeah, you got some done. It's just, there's 20 Coca-Cola glasses, literally. <laughs> literally 20 of them on that shelf just off the camera. And we just, you know, we do what we have to. We, we wake up most days and go, this is what has to get done today. Let's just get toys done. And then tomorrow, let's get dishes done. And then the next day, start all over. Um, so let's go through some of the toys I got. I love me some Minecraft stuff. Uh, it's so tempting always to keep all of it, but I've sold almost everything Minecraft I've put in my booth. So that was a good find, especially it's like, it's like 17 inches. It's a 17 inch or Steve. It looks cozy too. Like, he is, it looks he, huggable. He's nice and soft. <laughs> this was a pretty interesting buy today because I don't usually buy these big play sets to resell in our toy booths because floor space and just they add up too much. I like to go a little bit smaller than this. But I bought it because it was a dollar, which seems like it must have been a mistake. I've never seen anything like this price for a dollar at our Goodwills. Whoever was pricing it. Must have just messed it up. Maybe uh, they thought it was broken, like it's missing half of it or something. Yeah, maybe. Know. Yeah, that might have been it. They might have thought there was a backside. You know what? And now that you say that, there was definitely something that went here. Mm. You can see where something's supposed to latch in, but I personally really doubt there was a whole other half of it. Yeah. There could have been though. But even then, it just doesn't seem like. It would still be at least five dollars, I would yeah. think, because it's BBA. Yeah, I mean, but. We'll see. I don't know. I'll look it up later. There's definitely, like I said, there's something supposed to latch right there, but it doesn't seem like a whole half. Yeah. Because even, yeah, I don't know. Because it's just put together in such a weird way. But I'll put some Star Wars, I'll tape some Star Wars action figures on the inside. Put 10, 15 bucks. I don't know what we'll do with it yet, but uh, it'll go good in my toy booth. And heck, even if it doesn't sell, that one would be good on the top shelves. Just so when kids walk by, they go, BB-8! So cute. Yeah, I'm into that. Though. Do you like better, R2-D2 or BB-8? You really gonna make me pick? Pick right now. Pick, 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 pick. Uh... No. <laughs> <laughs> I like them both. What else did I get? Alright. Uh, giant Egg. Nice. It also, if you just joined the channel, I like to do a lot of weird creative projects. You're not gonna see it very well, but there's some Mario lamps and some cool things I've made up there. And uh, I've been meaning to get around to making a Luigi lamp or some sort of sculpture. I don't know what. And I keep buying eggs. Hold that real quick. So like, I bought this egg here and I was going to paint it to Yoshi colors. 
but you know it has this permanent crease in it and don't get me wrong i could bondo it or something to make it solid but i i, I don't want to do that and then i thought well i could actually make the yoshi coming out of the egg on the lamp and kind of put it through like that i keep having ideas like that but i just want to solve my I, what i'm picturing in my head to make for a lamp i'm picturing a solid egg so besides the form crease the form lines where it was formed together that's pretty much a solid egg so that's gonna be yoshiized before i'm done you know i'm excited I mean? it's gonna be great i need to just find a yellow one though also just to keep in the game room um now the rest is gaming stuff i got two video games that i'm excited about spec ops is one that i already have so that'll just go in our toy booth which we've only recently started selling games at whenever my doubles pile got too big and it was all doubles that like weren't really worth reselling or trading in at the game store i put them all in our toy booths and it's been going well it's all cheap stuff i mean we're talking three four five dollar games and then like the occasional twelve dollar game you know just the weird like crash bandicoot i don't know what a few good games uh we'll tape them closed and We'll put them in a toy booth and, and they'll sell pretty quickly so we're gonna keep doing that and so a lot of the stuff i've been bringing home the last few days matter of fact just below the camera there's about 25 games there and those are the ones i didn't scan into my collection i set aside to get filed in they'll be going to our toy booths in the next week or so uh and spec ops will be going with it and so we'll who wants to be there now that brings up another important thing with this playstation that i bought um we have yet to sell a console at our booths here. We've sold how many Wii's? Two or three Wii's and a yeah. GameCube? Yeah. At our booth in Kentucky. We left a bunch of gaming stuff there um, in our booth whenever we left there. And I think they're all sold. Yes. There might be one Wii. We, we didn't keep very good track of what was there, but every time on our, like, every, like once a week on our sales reports, uh, that's another thing we didn't add earlier when we sell something in those booths we got an email at the end of the day it says what we've sold so you know about nine o'clock here for us every day we sit down and go well how much money have we made and it's great because like our weekends and stuff sometimes it can be hundreds of dollars and that usually feels pretty good weekdays like today as of shooting this like mondays and tuesdays sometimes it's like seven dollars <laughs> seven dollars <laughs> and it kind of feels like a bummer but that's another thing that's like the nature of the game you're living for saturday yeah you're... saturday it's like three hundred dollars yeah you're like heck Yes. For one store. We, yeah. you know, we've, we've had a couple good weekends where it's just like cha-ching. Yeah. Um, but there's such a huge learning curve uh, for what we're doing. And I'm hoping that's what maybe makes us making content out of this a little bit interesting. We haven't really sold consoles here. Uh, and we've only sold Wii's and a GameCube over there. So I have a couple PlayStations ready to go. I have a couple Xboxes ready to go. We have a couple Wii's ready to go. I'm going to be real interested to test this out. It works, okay, great. Put a couple games on top of it, wrap it in some sort of plastic with a controller, put some sort of sticker on it that makes it very clear, oh, that's a PlayStation 2 ready to go. Put it in our booth and see how they do. Because with access to the Goodwill bins and access to all these thrift stores, a PlayStation 2, a working PlayStation 2 is really easy to come across. Yeah. And so is like an Xbox 360 Slim. Not every console is, you know, I'm not, I'm not coming home with a GameCube every day. That happens maybe once a month, but if I could sell a PS2 and a Wii every week, every couple, you know, or a couple every week, that'll start turning turning into some real money. I think. So that's why I bought this. Um, <laughs> I, another reason I bought it is because the Goodwill bins where we shop, and I, I almost have a nightmare in my head where it's like someone new is watching and they're like, they're going, okay, I understand the stores now. Now what's this bins he's talking about? <laughs> well, when we shop at the Goodwill bins and I buy these, they're always broken. I've never brought a working PS2 home from the bins even though they show up every day they get busted when they go to the bins so they always take a tumble they always take a big fall and don't work but this one sounds good it looks good it's clean there's not a lot of dust in the in the vents and stuff i have a lot of faith this one's gonna work but, um i want to get that working i want to put it in the booth i want to i want to make sure before this week's over i get some gaming systems in the booth and then maybe here in a few weeks if i make that video that i was talking about we'll talk about how console reselling is going there um and it'll be interesting to get into i've i've used to be a question i got a lot if you just go back two months three months with our videos i all but just didn't resell gaming stuff um i prefer to collect it that's what all this is we love collecting video games together coming home and playing video games together he collects them i play them that's exactly how it goes <laughs> <laughs> and so we 
we kind of stayed away from it as long as possible, but now we're just so flooded with the extra stuff that it's like, the VCR's rewinding. <laughs> SpongeBob is over. Um, that's really loud. So what was I even talking about? I said, say we're getting into it now and we'll see how it goes. And honestly, if it doesn't go well, we don't like it. And for whatever reason, too many of them get returned or whatever, we'll just stop doing it. We're way more interested in collecting this stuff than we are selling it. We're doing just fine selling the toys and the clothes, you know. But that's not all that I got there. I did also get a power supply for the Wii, which was cool. A, uh, what is it? It's actual name, multi-tap. I was going to say multi-port, but close enough. Uh, for the PS2. Which is cool because I'll probably may, maybe just put this like in the bundle, make a nice bundle of it. I don't know, maybe, maybe not, or I can in the future. Or I might just keep that one. I don't think I have an official Sony one. And it's extra cool because it le legit just looks like a tiny little PS2 Slim, doesn't it? Does. It does. It's super cool. It's really cool. <laughs> and I've never, I've never had one. I mean, I've got a multi tap, but it's like aftermarket. It's like a stand that the PlayStation goes in. Oh. The last thing that I got was two controllers. And I didn't look these up beforehand. I mean, I know about what they're worth. We've sold the nice colored uh, PlayStation 2 controllers before. But Hannah noticed once we got in the car that this one actually says PS1 on it. It's probably going to be a little bit difficult to see on the camera. But it says, it, not PS number one, PSONE, which refers to this. And I never bought one of these new, though this is my preferred uh, PlayStation 1. Well, that's kind of silly to say, really, but I just love this. I think this is such a great little big console. It works so well and stuff, but I don't, I've never had one inbox or anything, so it kind of actually blows my brain a little bit that maybe that came packaged with this, but I actually don't know. I'm gonna have to do some Googling. Uh, Hannah, the only, you said you found this online packaged individually yeah. on its own. So maybe it just came out at the time that this PlayStation one did, but maybe there was a box set. Doesn't much matter. I don't, I don't, uh, Neither of these two things mean anything. I was just surprised to see that PS1 logo on there. I was too. Because, you know, that one doesn't have it. That one just says PlayStation. So that one says PlayStation with the PlayStation logo. And then that one, PlayStation logo, PlayStation PS1. So. We had this controller growing up. Mine is very broken. Is it? Yeah. The, like, joysticks are missing the pad things. It's just disgusting. Does that one feel pretty good? This one does. This seems like... Type. Yeah, this feels brand new. It doesn't feel much played at all. Um, we, we probably will put those controllers on eBay because they're usually at least a good 20, 25 bucks. Uh, but the PlayStation 2, I have more regular black controllers in the room and uh, we'll put that in our toy booth. If it works! We plugged it up at the store, it turned on, but I didn't get to plug it into the TV. But if you don't know, PlayStation 2 you want to test it you need to throw a playstation 1 disc in there and then a clear playstation 2 disc and then a blue place playstation 2 disc and make sure they all work the blue ones are my nemesis and never place the blue because very often it won't and there's yeah there's methods to maybe clean it and make it do better but google it there's there's steps that's everything we got Woo. what's your favorite thing we got um i'm gonna go with this because Nostalgia. Oh, just because it brings back the memories? So many times well, I fought with my siblings. I'm I want a, the blue controller! Well, I'm not trying to be funny, but <laughs> <laughs> I think this red one's great. And I, I wish it wasn't buried so deep I'd go dig it out. I have this controller. I just never remember noticing the PS1 logo, so I need to go dig it out and see if it's on there. I mean, it's not going to mean much if it does, but... Uh, It'd be, it'd be good to know so i can look at look out for it in the future if you guys comment below what's your favorite thing uh that we got today also if you have any more questions about our booths and how that stuff works if you have any more interest in that just go ahead and pile them on today's video uh so maybe i can kind of write down some notes when i do make that video really explaining our toy booths and how they work uh maybe you guys can help out with that just a little bit now also before we get out of here listen we make daily videos on this channel so this video is our 340, roughly 340th video in a row without missing a day. And there's probably 10 or 15 days in all those days that had two videos. So we're, we're there, you know, we're, do, we're, we're almost a whole year into making daily videos. And I just tell you that to say that if you liked what you saw, subscribe so you can get notifications tomorrow, the next day, the next day, the next day. 
you can come back and hang out with us when we post other videos. Uh, also, before we go, consider joining our public Discord. It is a wonderful place. It really is one of my favorite things about this channel. It's just a public place where you can come chat with us and chat with other people watching these videos. Uh, there's a lot of PlayStation 2 stuff on the pickup section uh, this this weekend from yard sales and stuff. It's pretty cool to see. So I kind of feel a part of that community just being able to say, hey guys, look, me too. <laughs> um, also, I will say the other day, I could not for the life of me figure out what this... Uh, uh, pop was is a pop figure out of its box, so I had no context. I scanned it with eBay, I scanned it with Google, and everyone was like, I don't know. I posted it on the Discord, said, Hey guys, what's this? And it was like, somebody was like, This is so and so from this show. And I was like, You guys, you guys are like a, a wizard in my pocket. So if that sounds good to you, go over and join it. Maybe someone over there can be some help one of these days to you, like it was to me. Uh, what else? Tindostrash.com, check out our merch store. Just go put your eyeballs on it. We got a bunch of a big shipment of stuff going out tomorrow. You'll see. We'll go drop it off the mail. But we've sold a bunch of Tindo shades, a bunch of decals. Been selling a lot of Tindo shades and decals lately. Don't know why, but they'll be on their way probably by the time you watch this tomorrow. So that's gonna be it. Did I leave anything out? Subscribe. Did I not say that? Not yet. I kind of said it. Right. <laughs> so I didn't, we make daily videos. I didn't say subscribe. Pretty please subscribe because we're on our way to what 5,000 subs? Yes. And I'd like to get there quickly. So help us out if you've been watching for a day or for a week. It's time. Hit the subscribe button. Come back and hang out with us. So come back and hang out with us tomorrow. Come see how Pants is doing tomorrow. He's fine. He's fine. He's sleeping right now. <laughs> he's still a little mad, but he's sleeping. I'm so, still covered in cat hair. So yeah. Well, we're getting in the shower immediately after this is done. Um, come back tomorrow. Check on pants and hang out with us a little bit. So until then, guys, peace out.